praise don't you feel good in God's house today oh come on put a smile on your face I feel good I feel a little weak in my body but I feel good in my spirit for the Lord has brought us one more time into his house and we are so glad to be here clap your hands one more time as we enter into God's house we're going to begin with prayer and there should be some names on the screen that we're going to lift up and intercede for in the name of the Lord. How many know that God still answers prayer? How many know God is still answering prayer? He's a prayer answering God. So why don't you just, let's just begin to thank God as we begin to pray. Just fill the house with thanksgiving to him. Come on, let's hear your voice. Just begin to thank him. Lord, we thank you. Oh God, Lord, we praise you this morning. Yes, come on, let's just begin to, the song says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Let's give God thanksgiving. Come on, you don't have to look at me, look at God and, and enter into his gates with praise on your lips, the sacrifice of praise, thanksgiving unto him, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we bless you. Lord, you are great and you are greatly to be praised. God, if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be this morning? We wouldn't be here, but we thank you, God, for bringing us into your house one more time, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for your presence. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. We thank you for your grace and your favor. We thank you for your anointing and your presence. We thank you for the blood. Oh, had not been for the blood, we wouldn't be here, God. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for our bishop. We thank you, Jesus because you are a mighty and loving and caring God. And we are so grateful to be in your house one more time. Lord, we're not just here for ourselves, but there are names of our brothers and our sisters who are not here, who are sick in their body, who might be shut in, oh God, who are backslidden, who need a touch from you, Lord, who need a healing from you. God, we're asking that as we lift our praise and worship, that you will attend to the needs of your sons and daughters. God, that someone will be saved today, that someone will be delivered and set free, that someone will be healed. God, that someone will turn their mind around towards you, God, that someone will be elevated in their spirit. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And we will never fail to give you the best praise because you're not only the only God, you're the best God. There is none like you in all of the earth. And we praise you from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. The name of the Lord Jesus shall be praised. And the saints and the people of God lift your voice. 
Clap your hands and give God what is due to him in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're going to read scripture reading together as a corporate body found in Psalms chapter 25, verses 8 through 15. And we will read together again corporately as you see it on the screen. Verse 8 says, good and upright is the Lord. Let's read together as a family. Therefore will he teach sinners in his way. The meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Last verse. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. And the saints of God say amen. As you're still standing, we're gonna read our vision and mission together corporately. Again, that should be shown on your screen. And we're gonna ask everyone in the e-campus to join us as we state the vision and mission of Kingdom Apostolic Ministry in Jesus' name. Are we all ready? Let's read together. Our vision is to transform lives, influence the world, and build God's kingdom. Our mission is to glorify God as a global community through inclusive, holistic ministry. And the people of God say amen in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, kingdom. Praise the Lord, kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, kingdom. Hallelujah. For God is worthy to be praised. We Hallelujah. magnify him Hallelujah. on today. We bless his holy name. There is nobody like him. There is nobody Hallelujah. like him. There is nobody like him. I can search throughout eternity and find out there is nobody like him. There is nobody like him. We worship him today. you Jesus hallelujah we come to lift up the name that's above our name the healer the king of all kings the Lord of Lords the sweet sweet Jesus the great I am we come to magnify him and lift him up we come to glorify him hallelujah oh hey away from the noise alone Away, away yeah. to hear your voice and meet with you. Yeah. It's been a while, but my one desire is to worship you. I live yes, to worship you.
can lift my hand and say, oh. Okay. 
to welcome, welcome the Kingdom Apostolic Ministry. I'm going to try that one more time. Welcome the Kingdom Apostolic Ministry. Do you love your church? Do you love your church family? Do you love your brothers and sisters? Do you love your brothers and sisters in the e-campus? For all of those that are watching and those that are here this morning, with a heartfelt hallelujah, we welcome you to the house of the Lord here in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is our meet and greet. So we want everybody in the sanctuary and everybody online to go to your neighbor and say, let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Come on, go to your neighbor all over the building and say, let's lift up the name of Jesus in the end campus. Let's type it in the line. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Say, what's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I am Sister Lindsay Porter, and I am here with Sister Maya Morris. And we are representing Cam Youth Ministries. Cam Youth, make some noise. Yes, yes, yes. Today is Youth in Action Sunday. So as you saw, some of our young people on the praise team. We got our ushers, some of our young people. Yes, yes. And we hope you were greeted well in the hallway with the young people in the hallway. Yes. So we are so glad to be here. We have so much in store for 2023, and we want you to get involved with us. When we have Cam Youth Takeovers, yes, it's youth, but we want everybody to be involved. We want you to join us. February 19th is our first youth takeover at the Indy Campus. Yes, so clear your calendar and be here with us. February 3rd, we have a middle school to high school teen girls event here at the church at 7 p.m. And if you got a card, there is a list of everything we have planned for the month of February. But we really want you to get involved. And parents, please bring your children out. We have these events, and we are truly building a community within CAM Youth Ministries. And we want you to be involved. On um, the third and fourth Sunday in February, we also have Children's Church. So there is a ton for the youth to do. We just need you to bring them, and we need you to support us and pray for us and donate. Also, we have a fundraiser coming up. February 19th to the 26th, and you will hear more information about that. But again, Cam Youth Ministries is on the move, and we want y'all to join us. Yes. And Sister Maya will be telling us more about our interpretive arts ministry. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm here on behalf of the interpretive arts dance ministry. So if you have a daughter that is um, in the ages of 6 and 15, we would love to see them. I, myself, Sister Lindsay Porter, Sister... Uh, 
Elder Vivian Morgan, she's standing in the back, or walking this way, and Sister Jewel Patterson, which is standing in the back, ushering. We are, come to us if you have any questions. I'll be out in the foyer signing people up because we need some more of you guys, and we would love to see you there. Thank you. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's time for our morning hymn. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise? Hallelujah. Song says, Look and live. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Hallelujah. Float. Recording in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Everybody, look and live. My brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. It's recorded, it's recorded. from above, hallelujah, Jesus is, and I know it is true, look, look at me. Look at me Recording in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look at him. Look at him.
Because sometimes I think we come to church and let the praise team sing for us. So, so well, the farmer can get that old fashioned. You know what I'm talking about? Now let me see. Let me let me ask your neighbor, is you gonna sing this time? All right. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. I have a message, oh my friend, for you. It's recorded. It's recorded. It is word. Hallelujah. Jesus said it, and I know it's true. Look at me. Look at your neighbor and say, my brother. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus now and live. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. And it's only that you look and live. Let's try it one more time. Look and live. Look and live. Everybody say it. My brother. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus now and live. It's recorded. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. And it's only that you look. Now before you sit down, celebrate God's life in your brother. And hallelujah. Come on, celebrate. Celebrate your neighbor's life. Celebrate their life. You don't want to sit down without celebrating their life. Oh, now before you sit down, just do one other thing. Celebrate your eternal life. Your Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In Jesus. Thank you, singers. Give these singers a big hand clap. They bless us all the time. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I don't know why I said that. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Come on, clap your hands and help me say that. Oh, this little light of mine. Let it shine, let it shine. Come on, clap your hands and help me to say this little light of mine. Oh, this. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. Gonna let it shine, let it shine. Oh. Let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. Hey, this little light of mine. Oh, this little light of mine. Gonna oh, let it shine. Let it. What about the job? What about the job? Well, all on my job. I'm gonna let it, gonna let it shine. Let's see if we can clap those hands. Now I don't know about y'all, I feel like having church. 
cutting up in that east sanctuary. Oh my. My. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry, I just feel like praising him. Can I get about 10 people that are just praising with me another 30 minutes? Just 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. I just do what you do. But give God the glory. Just do what you do, but give God the glory. If you want to smile, smile. If you want to rock, rock. If you want to jump, jump. You can take another 15 seconds if you want to. Yeah. 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 Yes. Soul say yes. Soul say yes. Soul say yes. Soul say yes. burning fires because I feel that fire burning right now can I get somebody to, to give somebody old saints testimony and just look at somebody real quick and say he's a mighty burning fire he's a, mm.
started and got Mama Joy started. She's shouting in the back of the church. Oh, my. Do y'all hear what I hear? Do y'all hear what I hear? I hear some chains coming off. I hear some chains. I hear some chains coming off. I really hear chains falling. Shackles coming loose. I hear locked doors being opened. Everybody, everybody tell somebody, the Lord said, you have just been released. Released from your fear. Released from your doubt. Oh. Somebody sick just got released from their sickness.
Know he's here. Say it with your praise, Danny. He Come on, say it, saints. Oh my. Raise that hand and acknowledge God's presence. Elder David Hollis. The 
burden. The burden to have For in the sanctuary. God is here. God is here. Oh, come lay down. Oh, come lay down. The burden. The burden to have care. For in the sanctuary. For in the sanctuary. God. a favor give a great God a great praise a great God deserves great praise a great God deserves great praise Immortal and invisible to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Oh, we worship the Lord today. The book of Isaiah, you may be seated teaches us that when we fast, fasting is to break yokes. According to the book of Isaiah, when you fast, yokes are broken. And what you break during your fast God will send the anointing to destroy it. I was reminded this morning of the presence of the Lord when God told Israel, this Egyptian, you shall see their face no more. This thing is over. You're going to have another fight, but not with this one. He's sending angels to take wheels off of chariots. He's parting red seas for your departure. But what will be used for your departure will be used for your enemy's demise. I was sitting in my seat back on no Shia. I'm not ashamed. I was sitting in my seat and when Bishop starts saying, you're released. You're released from your fear, from your sickness. You're released. I heard the Holy Ghost say to me, why would you doubt me? I am the law. I do great wonders. Church, I just want to ask you, why would you doubt him? He is the law. He's going to do great wonders. He is the law. A few months ago, I was laying on my face. laying there in the living room on my face talking to the Lord and I was asking the Lord some things and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said what else I kept praying and I heard the Holy Spirit speak and say what else I kept praying and the Holy Ghost said what else kept adding to my list and I heard the Holy Ghost say why wouldn't I do it do me a favor 
turn to somebody on your left and right and say what's on your list now ask them why wouldn't he do it why wouldn't he deliver you why wouldn't he bring you out why wouldn't he save your family why wouldn't he cause you to overcome and triumph why wouldn't he do it Tell your neighbor, add some more to your list. Get off the short list. Go back to the long list. Stop just doing your day-to-day -day list. Go back to your five-year list. I honor the Lord for his greatness. And I'm thankful for the presence and the manifestation of his power and grace. I salute the angel of this house, the presiding bishop of the Pentecostal churches of the apostolic faith, Bishop Lambert W. Gates. I salute Lady Nancy Gates. The Lord bless you. The grace and the peace of God be upon you both. And to the Cam family, I salute each one of you and say Happy New Year. I haven't seen some of you since last year. To the saints that are watching us by digital platforms, I salute you. I would encourage you to make this space sacred. What do I mean by that? Don't watch church and the game at the same time. Your team might win, but you ain't gonna get this kind of victory. Carve out this space. Tell the whole house we in church. I'm thankful to the Lord. I want to salute and give God praise to seeing the saints. It's good to see the saints. After months of some of us not being able to touch one another, hug each other, after months and years, certain types of isolations and restrictions it's good to see the saints of God um, when we like them they're called the people of God when we like them they're called the servants of the most high when we like them they're called the ecclesia the called out the chosen when they get on our nerves we just call them the saints D-A the saints the saints got one more time to say something to me. The saints. I want to say today that I'm glad to see the people of God and the saints. Whatever category you fit in, I'm just glad to see you. I pray, I was studying a few weeks ago the word good. It is a Hebrew word called tov. The word good means benign. The word good means no harm. The word good means pleasant and acceptable. I pray you have a good week. I pray you have a no harm week. I pray you have a benign year a no harm year even if the enemy means it for evil God's gonna turn it for your good the next time you tell somebody have a good day have a no harm day just look over at somebody and say have a good week have a no harm week have a good day have a no harm day the next time you text somebody good night, you're telling them have a no harm night. Ooh, I'm thankful to God. God saw it and the scripture says, and it was good. Let's go to X, uh, Ephesians chapter number three. 
I want to thank the Lord for the hospitality of all those who played major and minor roles in my being here, and I am thankful for what the Lord has allowed us to be partakers of in his presence. Ephesians chapter 3, I begin reading at verse number 7. King James Version would read like this. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Verse 7 again. Whereof? I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to that to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. For a few moments out of the scriptures, I'd like to minister to you from the word of the Lord from this subject, boldness and access with confidence. I want you to make a declaration in this house. Say, I have, I have boldness, boldness and access, and access. With, confidence. with confidence. Find a saint. You can only tell this to a saint. Find somebody that's saved and tell them you have, you have. Boldness, boldness and access, and access. With, confidence. with confidence. The word of the Lord is ministered this morning out of a book known to us as the book of Ephesians. If you count in our Judeo-Christian Bible, uh, you'll see that book one will be Genesis, and if you just count the way they're placed, not necessarily in the order in which they're written, but just the way they're placed, um, the Revelation, the Apocalypse, will be book 66. One through 66, if you just count them, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. You then move into what we refer to as the prophets. And then you come to what we know as the synoptic gospel. You have what is historically known as the book of Acts. And then you get into these letters that are written, which are called epistles. We refer to them as books, but they are letters. When you arrive at the 49th book, you've arrived at the letter that the Apostle Paul would write to the church at Ephesus. This book only has six chapters. It has 155 verses 
when you look at this uh, city known as Ephesus, it's the capital of the proconsular of Asia, which is the western part of Asia Minor. Um, it was colonized principally in Athens. In the time of the Romans, it was known that it held the title as the first and the greatest metropolis of Asia. One of its distinguishing uh, monuments was the Temple of Diana, which held a chief shrine of Diana as well as this huge amphitheater. It was one of the largest in the world at that time because at that time it could hold 50,000 people. Well, it was in this arena that they used uh, to show forth might and power. You would see beast fight against beast. Lions would fight against bears. But it was also in this 50,000 seat open air arena that you would see uh, gladiators, men fighting against beast. You would see man clad in armor fighting against bears and lions. You could hear the roar of the stadium for miles. 50,000 people screaming would seemingly create uh, even a move on the needle of the Richter scale. Well, it was at this place that when the Apostle Paul first visits, he's only there for a few months. He's actually there for a short period of time trying to get to possibly uh, the Feast of Pentecost. He's only there according to Acts chapter number 18, verse number 18. You'll see that he's there just for a brief moment. But he leaves uh, in the responsibility of the church, he leaves a couple by the name of Aquila and Priscilla. Later, a gentleman who is mighty in the scriptures known as Apollos would join them. You would also see that Paul the Apostle mentions uh, concerning this when he writes his letter to the church at Corinth. He says, a great door and an effective door has been opened unto me in Asia. But it is in his missionary journey uh, his third missionary journey, according to Acts chapter number 19, that he will spend two years plus, uh, averaging about three years stay there. When you start looking at what happens there, when you start searching and seeing what mighty miracles take place, when you look and see what God does in Ephesus, you'll start seeing that uh, Paul starts preaching. The scripture teaches us that he's preaching so that he would stand and dispute. He would dispute the traditions of men. He stood and he would dispute. He would argue and come with counters even uh, of the fallacies and, and uh, the, the ideologies of men versus the scripture, the holy writ. He would take time to show and to prove that his apologetics were amazing, that he could talk and use Old Testament writ and show you ah, that Jesus the Christ is the Messiah. He took the time to stand and for weeks at a time he would stand and argue, stand and rebuke, stand and debate. Ah, he was not afraid to give an answer of the hope that lieth within him. The book of Acts shows us uh, that the name of the Lord was magnified, Acts chapter 19, verse 17. The Bible teaches us that even uh, that so mightily the word of God grew and prevailed. The Bible teaches us that there were those who uh, used curious books, we call it magic. The Bible says that after Paul finished preaching, that people brought their magic books. They, they brought uh, their soothsaying books. They, uh, they brought their books of divination. And the scripture says they set them and burned them and set them on fire. The scripture says both great and small believe. 
The Bible says in one case that while Paul was preaching, he laid his hands on them. Yeah. The Bible teaches us that it is also in Ephesus that while he was there uh, coming down to Miletus, the scripture says that he even asked a group of believers, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we ain't even heard about no Holy Ghost. <laughs> Paul asked them, then how were you baptized? They said, under John's baptism. He said, you did good because John baptized, but he pointed to one. John baptized unto repentance, but he pointed to one and said, there's one coming who will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. The Bible says that Paul laid his hands upon them and they received the Holy Ghost. They begin to speak in other tongues. They begin to prophesy. And Paul teaches them, you must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Church, the Bible says that there they were baptized. The scripture says Paul start preaching and teaching. So the scripture says that uh, there was a guy by the name of Demetrius. Demetrius was a silversmith. And Demetrius start noticing that people were leaving the temple at Diana and they were joining ah, ah, this movement and Paul was the, uh, the stirrer of this movement. The Bible says that Demetrius goes and starts a group, rallies a group together. The Bible says he gathers all those who work in his field. And he says to them, he says, now look here. He says, all of us are silversmith. We make our money from selling small statues of Diana. We also work in the temple, he says. <laughs> ah, he says, we work in the shrine. He says, the way this guy Paul is preaching, people are denouncing magic, they're denouncing the goddess Diana, and nobody's buying our trinkets. He says, if this gospel keeps getting out. Ha, it's going to affect the economy of Ephesus, church of the living God. Do you understand that you have a word in your mouth that is so powerful it impacts the economy? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Ha, your word, the gospel is so powerful in your mouth ha, that you affect city government, you affect affect national government you affect state government <laughs> oh stop being intimidated by the truth that you speak <laughs> church <laughs> but please be aware when you tell the truth <laughs> everybody's not gonna like you it will be some in your own house that will disagree with you <laughs> but the bible teaches us that the more Paul had disagreement the more the word of God grew and mighty were the works of the law. Paul then writes, and Paul begins to talk. He writes to this church we know as Ephesus. This letter is written from Rome. History says it's written during the apostle Paul's first imprisonment. Somewhere about AD 61, AD 62. It is a letter that sets forth, one, the groundwork, it sets forth the cause, and it sets forth within it uh, the aim and the end of the church. When you start reading Ephesians, it's phenomenal. Ah, uh, you start reading and Paul starts using phrases that he will consistently use through several chapters. You'll start seeing words like heavenly places, heavenly places, heavenly places. Then you'll see words like chosen, 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 chosen. Then he flips and he starts using predestination, predestination, predestination. Then he starts using the word adoption, adoption. Then he uses accepted, accepted. Then he starts using the word purpose. Then he uses inheritance. Then he uses redemption. Then he uses dispensation. Then he uses forgiveness of sin. 
And then he starts using these phrases that he consistently uh, rehearses. One of the phrases that he keeps writing, he writes, unto, the, uh, unto his good pleasure. Unto his good pleasure. Unto his good pleasure. Ah, then when you think you've got him pegged, he flips on you again and he says, unto the praise of his glory. Unto the praise of his glory. And then you say, all right, Paul, I'm with you. Then he says, according to his eternal purpose. Ah, church of the living God. Ha, when you read Ephesians, if you don't walk away with nothing else, ha, you should walk away understanding that this thing ain't about you. Ha, it's according to the praise of his glory. Ha, it's according to his eternal purpose. Ha, it's according to his good pleasure. Ha, church, ha, Oh, so why are you frustrated? Why are you pulling your hair out? Why are you having a bad day? Why things ain't going your way? Do you understand that this was already predetermined? Ha. You didn't become an afterthought of God. Ha. You were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Ha. Even though you were born into another family and the devil was your daddy, God adopted you and accepted you into the beloved. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You've got forgiveness of sin. You're not walking aimlessly through life. You got purpose. Oh, he chose a position for you to take. Oh, before you were born, hallelujah, to the Lamb. Oh, he saw you before your mama met your daddy. Before your grandmama kissed your granddaddy. Before your great granddaddy was born in South Carolina. And your great grandmama was born in Mississippi. Oh, Shama. Oh, church. He saw you when you were a part of the Ibu tribe in Nigeria. He saw you. Oh, when your family were descendants of Ethiopia. He saw you. Lord, have mercy. Oh, before your family came from Sierra Leone. This God had already chosen a stance for you to take. What did he choose? He chose that I should be holy. He chose that I should be blameless. Church, Paul the apostle starts writing. And when he starts writing, he starts using these phrases. He says now in fullness. When he uses that word fullness, he changes up what the fullness is. He writes in one verse and he says in the fullness of time. Ha. Then he writes again, he says, ha, in the fullness of him. Ha. Then he writes again and says, in the fullness of Christ. Ha. Oh, but then he starts mentioning something gets in Paul's spirit. Ha. Ha. It moves just from ha. Ha. that part of the cranium ha. Ha. which holds ha. Ha. that thought pattern and that intellect, but something gets in his spirit. Ha. And Paul starts writing about riches. Ha. 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 Now, when he says riches, I know some of y'all immediately go, ha. oh yeah, the lottery is 400,000 this week. Ha. Oh, church, ha. Oh, that's not the riches he's talking about. Ha. He starts talking in chapter one, verse seven, the riches of his grace. Ha. He then starts in chapter one, verse 18, ha, the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Ha. He then goes to chapter two, verse four, and he talks about being rich in mercy. Chapter three, verse eight, he talks about the unsearchable riches of Christ. Ha. And then in chapter three, verse 16, he talks about the riches of his glory. That word struck me, so I went and looked it up. Those of you who use strong concordance, it is G4149. It is Plutos. It is a word called Plutos. It means abundance. It means plentitude. It means valuable. So now let's put the definition in place of the word. 
ha, that you might know the abundance of his grace ha, that you might know the plentitude ha, of the glory of his inheritance ha, that you might know the unsearchable value of Christ ha, and that you might know the abundance of his glory ha, the devil is a liar ha, how dare you walk in church I don't care if you drove here in a car by yourself and you sitting ha, by yourself. Ha, you have never been by yourself. Because if God is with you, ha, you've got an abundance of his grace. Ha, you've got plentitude ha, of the glory of his inheritance. Ha, you got unsearchable value of Christ. Ha, how dare you call being saved boring ha. oh you speak out of ignorance ha. and be careful because you're about to sound like a fool ha. if you dare say ha, ain't nothing to being saved ha. I'm tired of going to church ha. you have no idea ha, what the value ha. Ah, the unsearchable value of Christ ha. oh how dare you say ha. Ha, I'm saved but I'm broke I ain't got nothing ha, the devil is a, the devil is a liar ha, do you not understand ha, the abundance of the glory of God that rests upon you ha, oh church ha, you ain't just got a sprinkle of his great but the hushama, ha, you ain't just got a touch of his mercy ha, I got unsaved searchable value ha. matter of fact you ain't got enough zeros ha, to add up how much I got ha. you gotta go past eight nine digits ha. oh it's so deep ha. oh praise a prayer that you would know the depth ha. it's so long he wants you to know the length ha. it's so wide he wants you to know the width ha. the circumference is so great ha. He wants you to know the breath ha, of the love of God. Church, do you not understand ha, that when the Bible says that God loved Israel, ha, the scripture uses the term that he set his love upon them. Ha, that word set does not mean teeter. Ha, God didn't put his love upon them ha, and it moves like a seesaw up and down. Ha, that word set, there's a Hebrew word that means to fasten. Ha, it means to lock, like to handcuff, ha, like to grip. Ha, when God told Israel, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Ha, oh, I didn't just put my love on you in this balancing. Ha, God said, I fastened my love to you. Ha, I handcuffed my love to you. Ha, oh, some of y'all wonder why some people can do stuff ha, and it don't bother them. Ha, and when you try to do it, ha, you get condemned ha. oh who shall separate you ha, from the love of God ha. his love is fastened to you ha. oh but that's not enough ha. it is not enough to have his love fastened to you because he told Israel I brought you the wilderness ha, to see if you would love me ha. I'm attached to you ha. but that don't mean you attached to me ha. oh have you ever seen two people ha. Oh, on a date, matter of fact. Ha. Ah, not too long ago, I was in a restaurant by myself. Ha. And they sat me down by this couple. Ha. And I was ear hustling. Ha. Ah, ha. I was eating. Ha. And they were just chatting back and forth. Ha. And I came to the conclusion. Ha. He likes her. Ha. She don't care about him. Ha. He paying for the meal. Ha. She just here for the ride. Ha. Oh, church of the living God. Ha. Some of you, ha, oh, God wants you. Ha, oh, he loves you, but you like him. Ha, oh, the reason you don't think he's much, because you think God ain't got a future. Ha, oh, you think ha, oh, that God ain't about much. He nice. Ha, oh, he give me some every now and then. Ha, oh, he good to me. Ha, he buy me little gifts. Ha, oh, I love him, but I ain't in love. That's foolishness right there. Ha, Oh, church, ha. but if you knew the value of his unsearchable riches, ha. if you knew God's future, ha. oh, you would stick with him. 
You see, we look at people that have arrived and we think, woo, she married up. He found a diamond in the rough. She stuck with him when he didn't have nothing. Oh, church, because love doesn't just look at where I am. Love looks at where I'm going. God loved me for not where I was, but he loved me for where he was taking me. I love him, not just because he got me out of a jam today. I love him for his future, because he's altogether lovely. Everything he does is unto the praise of his glory. It's according to his eternal purpose, according to his good pleasure. Well, church of the living God, Paul starts writing to the church and he starts using these phrases and then he starts telling the church, he says, this is where you were. He says, you were Gentiles in the flesh. You were called the uncircumcision. You were without Christ. You were an alien from the commonwealth of Israel. You were a stranger from the covenant of promise. You had no hope and you were without God in this world. He said you were messed up. He said you had no hope. He said when we looked in your future, it got narrow and dark and bleak as the years went by. He said you could have signed your resignation and it wouldn't have made it better because you were already without God. You already had no covenant. You were already a stranger from the covenant church of the living God. He says, I looked at your condition. God speaks to Israel and says, I saw you polluted in your own blood. I saw that somebody gave birth to you, but they didn't want you. The umbilical cord was still attached to you. They gave, they pushed you out, but they left you to die. Church of the living God. God says, I found you polluted in your own blood. I came, I cut your umbilical cord. I identified that I would be your father. Oh, Shama. He says, I, I looked around to see who you belong to. And when nobody would claim you, I picked you up. I gave you my name. And though death was on you, I looked at you and said, Live, church of the living God. I came here a dying creature. I came born in sin, shaping in iniquity, church of the living God. Paul says, that's what you were. But now, somebody holler, but now. Do me a favor. Look across the room. Find somebody who knows some of your past. Make eye contact with them. Let your eyes do the talking. Make eye contact with somebody ha, ha, and say, but now, ha, I know ha, you heard about me. I know ha, they said what they said about me. Ha, I know ha, the devil tried to condemn me. Ha, I know ha, that death was resting on me. Ha, I know ha, that I in this flesh ha, dwelleth no good thing. Ha, I know, ha, had it not been for the Lord ha, who was on my side, ha, I should have been pushing up daisies. Ha, I know ha, 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 that if he hadn't had mercy, ha, you'd have had my funeral years ago. Ha, I know ha, I ain't qualified ha, to stand behind the sacred desk. Ha, shouldn't be called a saint I should be called the least of them all but tell somebody but now now are you washed 
Now are ye sanctified. Now are you justified. Now are you born again. Paul tells the church at Ephesus, you who were far from God, you've been made nigh by the blood of Christ. But now, you used to be an enemy of God and you had enmity with God. But now, you've been reconciled to God by the death of his son. But now, though you used to be a stranger, and an alien from the commonwealth of Israel. Ha. But now, ha, are you fellow citizens with the saints? Ha. Church, ha. Paul writes ha, and says, but now ha, you're built upon the foundation ha, of the apostles and the prophets. Ha. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Ha. Church, ha, I came to tell somebody You've come too far ha, to turn around and go back. Ha, what you're going back to, ha, the poverty, ha, the weak and beggarly elements of the world. Ha, how dare you go back to a devil ha, that enslaved you ha, when Jesus made you free. Ha, he writes to the church ha, and says, you shall know the truth ha, and the truth shall make you free. Ha, Church, a couple no Hosiah, head to Shama. It feels good to dance. Ha, I with no shackles on my feet. Ha, it feels good to lift my hands ha, in the sanctuary ha, and call on the name of the Lord ha, with clean lips. Ha, it feels good to testify. Ha, I got victory ha, over the enemy. Ha, the world ha, can't do me no harm oh, shama, ha, it feels good ha, to look the enemy in the face ha, and say no weapon ha, that's formed against me ha, shall be able to prosper ha, church ha, Paul writes to this church ha, and he says now that you know ha, what valuable you got ha, now that you know ha, the ability abundance of his glory ha, now that you know ha, what God has done for you in plentitude ha, he says I advise you to walk ha, he starts using this word walk ha, chapter 2 verse 10 ha, he says walk in good works ha, chapter 4 verse 1 ha, he says walk worthy of the vocation ha, wherewith you've been called ha, chapter 4 4 verse 17 ha, he says walk not as other Gentiles ha, chapter 5 verse 2 ha, he says walk in love ha, chapter 5 verse 8 ha, he says walk as children of the light ha, and chapter 5 verse 15 ha, he says walk circumspectly ha, church of the living God ha, let no man ha, steal your crown but he uses ha, a, a word, ha, three words, ha, that while I was studying, ha, rose up off the page. Ha, he says, we have ha, boldness ha, and access ha, with confidence. Ha. Ah, for those of you that use Strong's Concordance, ha, it is G3954. Ha, ah, it's parasia. Ha, Parecia, ha. it's a word called bonus. Ha. It means fearless confidence. Ha. It means freedom of speech. Ha. It means cheerful courage. Ha. Tell somebody, ha. I got bonus. Ha. I got fearless confidence. Ha. I got freedom of speech. Ha. When I was on the devil's team, ha. Ah, the devil only made promises ha, but he lied because he's a liar from the beginning ha, I had to call on a God ha, that I didn't know ha, oh but I was intimidated ha, because I wasn't a member of his family ha, I wasn't
wasn't an heir ha, of God in joint heir with Christ. Ha, so I came with a gag order. Ha, ha, I wanted to cry, ha, but I couldn't cry. Ha, I needed help, ha, but I didn't know how to ask for help. Ha, but now ha, are we the sons of God? Ha, and he took my gag order away. Ha, can cry Abba Father ha, my Father ha, which art in heaven ha, hallowed be thy name ha, thy kingdom come ha, thy will be done ha, church ha, but Paul says I got boldness ha, and access ha, that word access ha, G41 18 it means assurance ha, in my approach. Ha, ha, not only ha, do I have boldness, ha, I got an open door, ha, but I can walk through the door ha, with a level of accomplishment, ha, with a level of assurance, ha, with a level of confidence ha, in my approach. Ha, when I go to God, ha, I have no question. Ha, did he hear me? Ha, when I stretch my hands, ha, I got confidence ha, that he hears me ha, when I pray. Ha, his eyes ha, are open. Ha, his ears, ha, his eyes are behold the righteous. Ha, his ears ha, are open to their cry. Ha, the Lord ha, looks on the earth ha, to see who he can ha, manifest his power. Ha, church, ha, I came to tell somebody ha, this year, ha, ha, I need you to understand ha, the value of his glory. Ha, I need you to understand ha, the unsearchable plentitude ha, of his grace because it gives you boldness. Ha, it gives you fearless confidence ha, and it gives you access. Ha, it gives you assurance ha, in your approach. Ha, church, ha, when you lay hands on the sick, ha, you're not laying hands. Ha, scary and iffy. Ha, the devil is a liar. Ha, I got boldness ha, with access. Ha, when the devil shows up, ha, rebuke that devil. Ha, who gives you the authority? Ha, it's not by might. Ha, it's not by power. Ha, but it's by his spirit. Ha, I got boldness ha, and access. Ha, but my boldness ha, and access ha, came with ha, confidence. Ha, G4006. Ha, it means trust and reliance. Ha, I know ha, in whom I believe. Ha, and I'm persuaded ha, that he is able. Ha, do me a favor. Ha, tell your neighbor. Ha, say I got confidence. Because I got boldness. And I got access. Ha, when I pray for you. Ha, I got boldness. Ha, and I got access. Ha, when I fall on my knees and pray. Ha, I got boldness. Ha, and I got access. Ha, say when I move. Ha, I expect something to happen. Ha, church. Ha, why don't you try it? Ha, lay hands on somebody's shoulder ha, and say in the name of Jesus, ha, be healed ha, and be made whole. Ha, say I expect something to happen. I expect something to happen. Ha, I'm looking for your deliverance. Ha, I'm looking for your breakthrough. Ha, 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 I ain't just praying. Ha, to waste my breath ha. I didn't walk up here to preach ha. Ha, Cause I ain't got nowhere else to be ha. I came with a word from the Lord ha. Cause he gave me boldness ha. And access ha. With confidence ha. Church ha. When you get home today ha. I want you to walk in your house ha. Plant your feet ha. And say I'm stepping in my house ha. With boldness ha. And access ha, with confidence. Ha, anybody got to work tomorrow? Ha, get on your job ha, and 
declare on your job I ain't here to be intimidated I'm here with boldness and access with confidence church even my praise ain't an intimidated praise some people used to tell you don't praise God too hard the devil will see you church my praise comes with boldness and access with confidence I praise him cause he's the only wise God I worship him cause he's the lover of my soul I live for him because he died for me I walk in him cause it's in him I live in him I move in him I have my beer do me a favor somebody praise him with boldness anybody you see pit and pat they ain't got no boldness anybody you see just barely doing it they don't know the value of his glow they go to whole shama because if you knew what a praise could do for you you praise him in the midst of your situation there's a value to his glory there's a value to his presence he walks with me he talks with me he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known church my assignment this morning is to assure your hearts that you got boldness and access with confidence everybody fix yourself straighten out your collar turn your skirt right pull your pants up cause you about to take a step it's a step in boldness tell your neighbor say neighbor look at me for the last time as fearful and scared cause I just got made known I got value of his glory I got plentitude of his grace tell somebody I got boldness and access with confidence I don't want you to take a scary step you ain't stepping on ice I don't want you to take a scary step you ain't seeing how cold the water is I want you to take a bold step cause you're stepping into grace you're stepping into his mercy one two three step neighbor for the rest of this year that's how I'm walking for the rest of this year that's how I'm talking for the rest of this year that's how I'm a preach for the rest of this year that's how I'm a teach for the rest of this year that's how I'm a live I got boldness and access with confidence and access I said plant your foot I want you to declare say this year I will experience a plentitude of his grace this year I will experience the unsearchable abundance 
of his mercy. I, I, I ain't intimidated. The devil is a liar. I got fearless courage. I feel like running through troops. I feel like leaping over walls. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Somebody clap your hands and give him praise. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, a great God deserves great praise. I said a great God deserves great praise. If you feel like clapping, clap, but make it a great clap. If you feel like waving, wave, ha, but make it a great wave. Ha. If you feel like running, ha, run, ha, but make it a great run. Ha. If you feel like leaping, leap, ha, but make it a great leap. Ha. If you feel like dancing, go ahead and dance. Ha. But make it a good dance. Ha. But let everything, let everything that I breath give him praise. Everybody clap your hands. to tell you if you never knew it before this year you got boldness and access with confidence doors that you thought were closed he's given you access Somebody, I ain't even got to turn the knob. When I get to the door, it's gonna open, says me. Tell yourself, last year was your last year for walking in fear. year was your last year for walking in insecurity you have wholeness and access with confidence do I have anybody that does sign language Suspended. Access. 
success. I love her. She did it with a level of smooth. I fly under radar. You won't even see me coming till I'm there. without talking when you get to work hold up you can't do again the next time you tell me you can't do something I'm just gonna say all y'all that like to post post that all y'all that need a reel you got a reel Praise for our teacher this morning. Church. The challenge is that that letter was mailed to the church. And somebody has been opening our mail, reading our mail as though it's theirs. That letter was not sent to the world. That letter was not sent to the unregenerate. That letter was not sent to the unbeliever. That letter was sent only to the saints. Stop giving unbelievers your mail. All things don't work together for good for everybody. It only works together for good to them who are the cause. works together for good to them who love the Lord. Some of y'all making these general statements and they don't apply to everybody. This letter was to the church. Now, if you want access, if you want this boldness, it comes with confidence. But it's through the blood of the Lamb 
and the Spirit of our God. Today, you can be a recipient of the grace of God. Today, you can be born again. Today, you can be accepted in the beloved. I don't care what family you were born in naturally. You can be adopted into the family of God. Today, because of the blood of Christ, though you might feel like you're far away from God, you can be made close by the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, you can get your life right. We have a habit of telling people, you better get your life. You better get your life. We leave one word out. Right. Don't just get your life. Get your life right. Today is a good day to get your life right. Jesus said, you must be born again. How dare you go into 2023 working on your credit? How dare you go into 2023 working on your relationship? But you won't work on your eternal destination. I want you to get your credit right, but I want your life right first. I want you to work on your relationship. But I want you to work out your soul salvation first. Men and women of God are standing at the altar and they're ready to pray with you and pray for you. But you must be willing to come. Nobody's going to grab you by the arm and make you and drag you down the altar. In a moment, I'm going to say come. When I say come, don't you wait to see who's going to go first you ready to get your heart right, get your mind right, get your life right, when I holler, come, you get down here. Come! <laughs> Kingdom Apostolic, I want you to clap for everybody that walks down that aisle. Come! 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 I want you to praise God like that's your sister. Come! I see a whole family moving. Come! They're coming down each aisle. Come! Come! Stop sitting there waiting on somebody else to go. You didn't want to be first. They already moved. It's your turn. Come! Come on, young man. God bless you. I see you coming. Come on. She waiting on you to go. You waiting on her to go. Grab her by the hand and both of y'all come together. Come! Give God praise. Even children are coming. Come! My grandmother used to say, while the blood is still running warm in your veins. Come! Come, they're coming from the far rear. Come on. Come. Come. Hallelujah. Today is your day. Salvation and glory. Oh, God bless you. They're still coming, saints. Honor and power unto the Lord our God. Kingdom Apostolic Ministries. Don't pray for somebody to get saved and then when they start walking, you get tired of celebrating. We must rejoice with heaven rejoices. Somebody's getting some help. Give God praise for help. Why sit in your seat and watch somebody else get blessed? When you could be the one at the altar getting blessed. Come. Come. For this.
his promises unto you and to your children even to those that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call but you have to come don't you leave here and say I almost went up don't you leave here and say oh he kept looking at me you got that right I'm looking at everybody in here come the Bible says knowing the terror we persuade me see you in a burning building I ain't gonna walk up and say hey the building's on fire get out if you want to I'm screaming get out I'm telling you today don't you live in sin get out don't you live in darkness the light has come hallelujah Salvation and glory, salvation and glory, honor and power, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God, for the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord, yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. Oh, somebody give God praise. The Lord Looks like a family is coming. God praise for the whole family. All praises. All praises be to the King. Oh, and the Lord. And the Lord. Our God. He is. He is wonderful. All praises. Don't you pass up this moment. Don't you miss this opportunity. You've got an open door. Step into it. writes to the church at Ephesus and he says we have boldness and access confidence we have boldness and access 
confidence. We have boldness and access to confidence. That's what you have. God bless you. You're, they're still coming. God bless you. It ain't too late. God bless you for coming. You might have struggled to make that decision, but I thank God you made it. If you get in in the last hour, you're going to get the same reward. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know just to know thus saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove you are and Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to Everybody call his name. Jesus, Jesus. How I, how I, how I prove, I prove him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. for grace in your patience thank you for allowing me to share what I believe God gave me to say to this house boldness and access with confidence Ooh. this is not something I'm trying to do on my own it's according to his good pleasure. It's according to his eternal purpose. It's according to the praise of his glory. How can I fail when his glory is riding on me? How can I be defeated when I got a plentitude of his mercy? I'm above only and not beneath. Two time I shot. These are not just words we just throw around. It's what I have in him. When you say I can do all things through Christ. I used to be a stranger to be an alien I had no hope and no God in this world but now if I was going to die I should have died before I got saved 
but now. Even if I die now, I can't die, I just sleep. I've already passed from death unto life. Who am I shy? Because I live in him. I want to thank the Lord for you being here. But I want to thank the Lord for his presence being here. <laughs> Encourage your neighbor. Say, keep praying. Now ask them, why wouldn't he do it? Don't you stop asking him. Why wouldn't he do it? It's unto the praise of his glory. It's according to his good pleasure. It's according to his eternal purpose. I want to be a blessing in the house and I need you to join me. I'm asking each of you to participate. One of the reasons we're able to affect the community. Thank you, altar workers, I appreciate you. One of the reasons we're able to bless the community the reason the church is in a position to bless the community is because when God blesses us we bless the house when the house is blessed, the house is in a position to bless the community. It's in a position to bless those in-house who need help. It's in a position to further ministry. As you heard earlier, for CAM youth, for our children. If you're going to invest in their soccer games and their football games, when your kids decide to go play football, it ain't cheap. Equipment costs. And if we can support them in those endeavors, surely we can support our youth in the house of the Lord. Amen? I'm asking everybody to prepare and give. If you notice the way God moved in his house today, we didn't even have tithing and offering. So it's still time. It is in this moment, both here in person and those of you watching from digital platforms, you still have ways to give. It is up on your screen now. You can give by Givelify, Cash App. We still take checks as long as it's money already in the account. If you choose text to give, and also you can go on the website, www.cam.church. There's no such thing as, oh man, I ain't got no cash on me. We thought about you. We have made it convenient for each one of you to give. But I'm asking those of you who have been blessed, the Bible says a man ought to give as God has prospered him. I'm asking everybody that's been blessed and put in a position to do it, join me with a $50 gift. Everybody that's blessed to do it, I need you to get it now. Without debate, without hesitation. Now don't you go back to intimidation, you were just bold with access. But everybody make the effort. If you're giving by cash, somebody say cash still works. We have not moved to a cashless society even though we're getting there. Some places you go now, they have the sign, no cash. But if you choose to give by cash, as you exit the sanctuary, ministers of order, we call them ushers, they are there ready to receive along with the deacons they're there ready to receive your cash donations and gifts but i want everybody to give 
I'm not asking you to do something I'm not doing. I'm giving as well. Mine will be by cash app. My phone is there. Now, what I would like to encourage everybody, please don't act like you on cash app, but you texting somebody. Be truthful not only in your words, but in your actions. Everybody that is given, just raise the device that you've given with or the gift itself. Everybody that's given, either raise the gift if it's cash, check. If you gave on your mobile device, just hold up your device. I want to pray. Even if you say, preacher, I just don't have anything. Raise your hand. Say, Lord, this is the hand I would have gave if I had it. I would have given with this hand. Father, I thank you. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be a participant in giving in the house of God. For some of us, there was a time we didn't have anything to give, but we made covenant with you. And we said, Lord, if you ever bless me, I won't hesitate to bless your house. Lord, I thank you because you blessed us. And now is the time for us to keep that covenant. We give willingly, we give cheerfully, and we give with glad hearts. You told Israel that you would rebuke the devourer for their sake. Lord, count us in that number. You told Israel you'd close up the hole in their money bag. Count us in that number. Lord, I ask of you that you would bless our going out and our coming in, our down sitting and our uprising. Bless the work of our hands and let us enjoy the fruit of our labor and let our labor not be in vain. I trust you to do it in Jesus' name. Somebody give a great God a great praise. exciting seeing souls go down in Jesus name oh my hallelujah celebrate someone who is not only a gift to this church and the body of Christ, but um, she's also the most vital part of my human existence. I literally would not exist if she weren't here. Uh, she's none other than my beautiful mother, sister, Nancy Gates. Let's give God a praise for her.
In a couple of days, she'll be celebrating a huge milestone. She will be 60 years old. Uh, not only is my mother stunningly beautiful, but she has a vast wealth of knowledge and a seemingly never-ending wisdom. Um, any of you who have been fortunate enough to have a conversation with her, leave inspired and um, with a deep appreciation of her intellect. Um, she has the uncanny, God-given ability to help others actualize their potential and inspire them to take action in their personal lives. Um, I'm extremely proud and honored to be the son of such a powerful, phenomenal woman. I certainly wouldn't be the man that I am today um, without her motherhood and the impact that she has on not only myself, but my family and Cameron and of course, Bishop, a lot of what you see for him, it's because of her. One of the many things that I love and appreciate about my mother is her zeal for life and adventure. Um, at the age of 60, um, there's a, it's a time where many people are slowing down their lives and her life is really just beginning and there's um, no signs of it slowing down anytime soon. Uh, she, rent, she recently took a trip to Antarctica, and um, the rumor has it that there's a Vegas trip going on here in a few weeks. Um, I plan on crashing that party. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Um, there's nothing that we can give her materially in return for all that she is to this church and our family. Um, but on behalf of the camp pastors, partners, and the entire camp church family, we want to wish Sister Gates a very happy birthday and bless her with an all expenses paid trip to the destination of her choice for her next adventure. Uh, we also want to present a special gift card bouquet um, from the Kingdom Women, the Women of Purpose, the Cam Pastors part Partners, and the Cam Church family. Let's all stand all over the building and help celebrate Sister Gates. <laughs> Amen. And let's just shout a big happy birthday. Amen. You may remain standing. I tell you, to be 60 and have a 39 year old husband, that's really, that's really doing something. <laughs> I'll pay for that later. But God bless you today. Thank you for your patience. You've been most patient here in the sanctuary and in the East Sanctuary. Didn't Elder Hollis bring a wonderful word? Right. Now we're, we're way over our normal time, but aren't we glad for these souls? Amen. Now let me say this. Somebody say more souls. Now Elder Hollis is in revival. I want you to forget that. Streaming, we want you in every service. All of us who are here, you demonstrate you can be in the building. Tonight is anointing service. Elder Hollis will be bringing the word. He'll be on the floor preaching right around 7-11. Service starts at 6 o'clock. And uh, he might be up earlier than that. Now during the week, he's going to be on for a service to start. We have prayer at 7 and streaming Monday and Tuesday. And he will be on the floor preaching by 7.45 Monday and Tuesday. Right here. Come on out in the room. But tonight is anointing service. Let's come back and have a great time. Make sure you invite those that need Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to get some coffee. I'll see y'all later. Amen. We're not going to have benediction until Tuesday night. So God bless you. Lord be with you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Goodbye, Brother Burton. Would somebody say with me, let me get about 50 folks to say with me, we love you, Brother Burton. All right, amen. Maybe that'll keep my friend for a while.
Love you. Love you. Y'all back. Love you. Y'all back on y'all posts. I love it. We thank God for our youth ushers today. I hope they can hear me. The young people were ushering and they were just fantastic. We appreciate you.